This is a two-part tutorial on creating a uh, fireplace in 3D Studio Max and rendering it uh, realistically. Um, this could be used in any kind of project, uh, interior design, visualizations, architectural visualizations, and so on. So the first part is going to deal with actually modeling the fireplace, and the second part will deal with the texturing of the materials and the setup for rendering. Okay, so I'll start by making a plane and uh, before I do that I need to make sure my units are set up correctly so um, I'll go to customize unit setup and make sure that I'm set to centimeters and then I'm going to draw out a plane in my top viewport and in my uh, parameters I will set it to I'm going to just set it to really big because it's kind of like making a set really so I'm going to make it 10 meters so that will be um, 10, uh, what will 10, 10,000 centimeters, no, 1,000 centimeters, my maths is terrible, by 1,000 centimeters, okay, and then um, I need to uh, decide on how many segments I need in it, so 4 by 4 is probably going to work out well for me, so I'll leave it at that right click to make the plane and I don't think pink is such a great color for my floor so I'm just going to choose a neutral gray to begin with okay so I'm gonna go into my perspective view and bring it up full screen and press F4 to show my segments and then in my modify uh, tab I'm going to convert it to an editable poly and then I'm gonna go into edge mode and I'm going to select these four edges and switch to my move tool so that is the select and move tool the shortcut is W and I'm gonna hold down shift while I drag on the Z axis to duplicate and create a another edge basically and I want to take that edge up to where the top of the fireplace is gonna be so I'm just eyeballing this I don't have specific measurements uh, so I'm gonna say about there Okay, and then I'm going to hold down shift again and just drag it up to the top. So now when the camera renders, it's not going to see the ceiling, so it doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to take this high so it's going to be out the way so that the wall is, is going to be uh, fully covered by the camera. And then I'm going to switch to polygon mode and I'm going to select these four polys. And I'm going to choose the extrude tool, bring up the settings, and I'm just going to extrude that out to create basically the the sort of uh, body of the fireplace okay so we've got that kind of scenario now I'm gonna select just these two polys and I'm gonna go to my inset tool and to the settings and I'm gonna bring that in a bit just to the sort of outer frame of the fireplace and then uh, press OK and then I'm going to go to my bevel settings and I'll zero those values out and I'll first of all bevel it out and then add another bevel in add another one zero that out and now it needs to go in another one zero that out a little bit in again another one zero that out and now we go to the back of the fireplace okay so if I click away and just give you a look at that I've created this sort of area for the uh, fire to be in um, I'm gonna select these two polys and just move them up temporarily and I'll show you why in a moment and then I'm going to create sort of like a shelf to go around here. So I'm going to switch to the box tool and I'm going to make sure that auto grid is on so that when I draw it's going to pick up this floor as the grid. So I'm just going to draw into there. 
and then right click to make it and then let's go to our modify tab and let's first of all change the color and then I need to position it okay and we'll just change the dimensions a bit I want the length to be a bit more and the width to be a bit more okay so now I've got that little step. Now I'm going to go back to this object into polygon mode and take those two polys and move them down. This is the floor of the fireplace. You do not want them to be on exactly the same value as this step because then when you render it those two faces will fight with each other. So just a little bit above there. Okay so we've got our um, fireplace area and a couple of things I want to do now, I want to set some kind of grill inside here to hold the fire. So I'm going to go back to my create tab and to shapes and I'm going to choose rectangle. Still making sure that I'm on auto grid, I'm going to draw out a rectangle inside here. Okay and um, I just want to turn off these settings so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay so I've got that rectangle and I'm then going to hold down shift and make a duplicate and make two duplicates. Okay so now um, in my modify tab I'm going to convert that rectangle to an editable spline and I'm going to press uh, where is it attach and then I'm going to attach these other two splines so that this becomes one object. I'm then going to right click and say hide unselected so that I'm dealing with just this grill object. So in the editable spline I'm going to go to the spline sub object, select the bottom one and go to cross section and I'm just going to start picking up like that so that it creates these verticals on the corners. Okay, Then I'm going to go to my uh, rendering uh, rollout and I'm going to put enable in renderer, enable in viewport. And so now I've got this kind of grill shape. And the reason why it's rectangular is because I've chosen rectangular here and I've set it up. I could make that a bit finer if I wanted to. Uh, okay. All right, so there's my grill. Um, I'm going to at this stage collapse this, collapse this down to an editable poly because I'm finished with it. And editable polys generally uh, perform better in rendering and in modeling. So right click editable poly. Okay, then right click, unhide all, now we have the grill or grid. Uh, the next thing I want to do is create some kind of like area of debris here, sort of representing the coal and the um, wood that's making up the fire. But it's really not going to be the focus of the render, so it's just going to be kind of a jumble of stuff. So I'm going to start off with uh, a geometric shape, a sphere, and I'll draw a sphere in here and then in the hemisphere section I'll take that value up so that it's not going all the way around the bottom it's just it's just kind of touching the floor like that okay and I'll give it plenty of segments okay right click and then I will go to the uh, scale tool the shortcut is R and I'll scale it in and whoops and out and just flatten it a bit okay so now I've got this this sort of shape representing the fire kind of debris that's going to sit in there just move that out a little bit right so now I need, need to make it look a little bit more like it's debris so in my modify tab I'm going to add the modifier called displace and under the map section I'm going to choose the noise map. I'll set the strength up until I start getting some distortion. Okay, so now I can see I've got that distortion going on there. Now I just need to edit this map. So to edit the map I need to open up my material editor and I need to drag, let me just get rid of that there, I need to drag this map into my material editor as an instance which means that whatever I do to it here will be wired through to this shape here. 
So now that I've got it in here, I can start adjusting the tiling. And notice the way as I adjust the tiling, it kind of squeezes this up because the map is getting smaller. So I'm going to set this to 10 on X, Y, and Z. Okay, so that looks a little bit more like this kind of stuff going on there. Um, I'll adjust the decay a bit. Okay, and let's just move it down so that it's intersecting the floor. Okay, so there's our kind of <coughs> fire stuff, coals. Um, and I'm also going to add a turbo smooth modifier to that. I just see if that helps at all. Let's just see. No, not really. Okay, so then I'll rather just take that off. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. Next thing I need to do is create something to put the flames on. And I'm just going to create a plane for that. So I'm going to choose the plane tool, draw out the plane in the background here, and just move that to intersect with the middle of the fireplace. So that's where the flames are going to go. And then, and also set it to the standard color. And I'm going to do the same with the grid as well. Okay, and my fire debris. It's always easier to put it all in one color so that it kind of uh, looks cohesive. All right, and then we're going to put a rug, an oriental rug here. So I'll choose the box tool, make sure auto grid is on, and I'll just draw out rug give it a little bit of height and let's have a look at what that height is here okay let's make it one centimeter so it's not too thick all right and set that so that is our model for uh, our fireplace I just need to set up some material IDs here so if we have a look this is its own object so we can set a material as its own material this is its own object, same. This is its own object, and these two things are their own objects. However, this, which is the floor and the wall and the fireplace housing, is all one object, but it's not all going to be one material. So we need to set up some material IDs for the different materials that are going to go on here. So I'll hide everything else, and then I will go into polygon mode, and I'll start setting up the materials. So the floor will be my first material. So I'll select all the parts of the floor and then in my rollout I'll go down to material IDs make sure that it is set to one which it is at the moment and what I normally do is once I've set a material I then hide the polygons so that I know I've done that okay next we're going to set the side walls here so this here and this here we'll set that to material ID 2 and then hide selected then we're going to do the main column of the fireplace so that's going to be these pieces and I'll also do underneath here just for good measure even though that won't be seen and that's going to be material ID 3 then hide that and now we can start looking at Basically everything around the outside is going to be the same material. The inside is just going to be a matte black. So let me do the inside first. And set that to material ID 4. And then I'm going to go to edit, select invert, which selects what, what's left basically. And we'll set that to ID 5. Okay, so now I'm going to unhide all. And just to check, always check your, uh, your IDs because it's very easy to make a mistake here. So I'm just going to go to the select ID and I'll set it to 1 and say select. Okay, I'm happy with that. 2, select, yes. 3, select, yep. 4, yes. And 5. Okay, so that's done. Alright, so now I'll unhide all. And now we are ready to uh, move on to part two of this tutorial, which is setting up the materials and setting up a render. I hope you found this short tutorial helpful and informative. I will be adding more tips and tricks videos to my YouTube channel regularly. So please subscribe and return here every few weeks. Thanks for watching.